Hi, my name is Paula Nutting and I'm your musculoskeletal specialist and this is my first recording on um, bodies, dysfunctions, functions and all sorts of other groovy things. So welcome to what I've got to offer. Today we're going to be talking about stretching and in particular talking about stretching of the core and the trunk. Um, you've probably heard lots and lots and lots of stuff about how we need to have core strength and core stability or what goes hand in hand with both core strength and core stability is core flexibility, aka how much we can stretch, how much the muscles can lengthen. And uh, unless we make sure that we can do uh, strength with length, then we're really not getting the full picture. So here I'm going to show you some five, five different shots of things that you can do to help improve the quality of your trunk and your core stability and your general flexibility and well-being. So here we go. This first shot you've got me lying on a fit ball. Now the reason I'm using fit ball for this is twofold. One, it's uh, really, really supportive for the back and uh, in this case no matter what kind of back condition you've got, if you've got a big curve in the lower back or a bit of scoliosis, the ball will always help maintain some uh, form and stability for you. And secondarily, you can see with this shot, I've got my feet, that's the our pivot point, which means that now I'm going to have to use the intrinsic muscles of my ankles to assist with the balance. And also, I'm turning on some of the pelvic floor muscles that will help me as well. And we look a lot nowadays about, <clears throat> pardon me, how we have, if one muscle group's turned on, it makes the other muscle group turn off and it helps us with our length and stretching. So, in this shot, we're stretching the rectus abdominis, the big tummy muscle that runs all the way down from the start of the ribs down to the pelvic bone. But you'll also see I'm stretching through my thoracic cage. So stretching the pec muscles, the front of the arms, a little bit of the anterior deltoid and part of the bicep, all the way under the lats. And getting a really good stretch through here. Uh, so this helps us with our front of our tummy or our core flexibility through the front. So we're going to look down to this next slide which is what we're going to be doing once we've looked and addressed the front of the tummy or the, the front of the core we're going to look at what we can do at the back. So when we do something at the front really we should do something reciprocally at the back and right now you've got a big fat glute stretch on a big fat glute aka my big fat glute. Lying down you can see the back is nice and supported, my arms and shoulders are out flat. I've got my right leg out lying just naturally and my right arm is holding the top of my knee of my left leg and stretching it right underneath the armpit. Now the further we can get with that flexibility the better the length we've got in the glutes and the little surrounding muscles in the hip flexors or those really deep hip external rotators the better the stretch and the better the give through the pelvis. We do so much sitting, folks, sitting in front of TV, sitting in front of these computers, sitting in cars, that our glutes shrink and we really need to increase our flexibility for them. So this is a fabulous way to stretch it. And all our stretches, you need to maybe incorporate uh, daily in a perfect world, uh, at least every second day, and you should probably try to hold them for at least a minute. The longer you can hold a stretch, the more the muscle understands the new length and the more that you've got to use that new length. So once we stretch it, we've got to walk it, keep it long, keep it flexible because, you know, the use it or lose it, that's exactly what happens here. Okay, so stretch number three, we've done abdominals, we've done glutes, and we're not going to forget the lower portion of the glutes and the upper part of the leg, port, portion of the leg, aka the hamstring. What you'll see here, I'm lying on my back, nicely supported again, leg is extended up, hip is really pulled into a flex position and I'm holding, A, one hand is up here holding the ankle trying to pull my leg further forward, B, my other hand is holding at that lower end around the kneecap and we're stretching what we call the proximal part of the hammies or those the deep hamstrings right at the top of the hip. You can see my other leg, the right leg, is resting on that fit ball. And what I'm doing here is I'm increasing my instability on this side, which means that I've got to turn on muscles to support me on the right leg, which means hopefully I'm going to be turning off muscles on that left side. So again, you're going to be holding that stretch for as long as you can to um, facilitate a long length of hammy. 
our last shot coming down here. Number four, we're going to be talking about um, the lateral flexors or the muscles down the lateral side of the trunk. So again, the body is using that fit ball and we're turning on the muscles to help stabilize down here. The right knee is hooked in, coming up using the right side of the flexors, which means if these guys are on folks, these ones have got to be more likely turned off. Alrighty, so right knee hooked in, left foot is going to be on the carpet for stability, stretching lateral trunk. So we've got our lat dorsi, we've got our obliques, you will have heard of obliques, internal and external obliques. We're also stretching down this point right here, we're stretching our glute medius, you all have heard of the glute med, that's the muscle that actually helps you when you're walking, it holds the, the pelvis up on the standing leg when the other leg is swinging through, and also helps with just general standing. And we've also got a secondary little muscle in here called our tensor fasciolata, I love that name, TFL, and the TFL helps with when you're standing on that leg and twisting, so it is an internal or medial rotator, and they both get a bit of a stretch on it here. So we're increasing the stretch also through the thoracic cage. So all our internal diaphragmatic and intercostals are getting a good stretch. And last but not least, we've done most of the upper body. We need to get in and address the muscles attached to the pelvis, especially the ones on the inside of the thigh. So we have got our adductors, the adductor group. And you can see the way I'm, I'm got myself perched on the carpet. My back is in its normal slightly lordotic curve. My arms are sitting vertically. So if I've got shoulder conditions or anyone I, that you've got who you're um, giving these exercises to have shoulder conditions, that vertical support is really, really good for them. Feet are together. This is where it starts getting a little bit uncomfortable, a bit stretchy. And the knees are as wide as they can. So what we're doing here is we're stretching our, our um, short adductors mainly, those inside thigh muscles that get super, super tight as well because of all the sitting and leg crossing things that we do, just our histrionically what we are right now. So sitting into that stretch for at least two minutes is better. And once you start feeling the stretch ease, then you sink your hips down into the carpet a little bit more. Ultimately, we're trying to get the pelvis right down. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you've learned a little bit today. And if you want to come and learn a bit more, please take the action and go to my website, www.yourmusculoskeletalspecialist.com. My name is Paula Nutting, and I hope that I've helped a little bit today, and have a great one. Cheers.